The spread of more and more bad news about smoking led tobacco manufacturers to buy family-oriented food companies to camouflage their true identity and to polish their image. They have now gained social acceptability through the sponsorship of arts, sports, culture, education, and even health research, hospitals, and medical organizations. A key component of DOC's strategy is to monitor the tobacco industry like a parasitic disease. We use a map to see where they're going to be in our communities, a calendar to see when they're going to be there, often nights, weekends, and holidays when the kids are out of school. And above all, we use a camera. They don't like that. Excuse me, sir. Can I ask you not to, to videotape some sampling? Oh, why is that? Because we don't, we don't allow it. You don't we allow it? Why not? We just, we can't because of our sampling rules. We can't allow them to be You can't allow it, but this is public property. While cigarette smoking has become less fashionable among higher income Americans in recent years, the fact remains that the prevalence of cigarette smoking has declined on average by less than 1% per year in the United States. Tobacco companies and their allies in the advertising business have worked very hard to identify new customers. As a result, women, ethnic groups, and teenagers have become the primary targets of the tobacco industry. One of the ways that tobacco company will appeal to women in particular is to uh, support some of their community activities, such as the uh, Virginia Slims tennis tournament. What you have there is uh, role models for young women. Smoking then is related to independence and freedom and being attractive. Tobacco is not that kind of a product. It's a kind of a product that's uh, very poisonous and uh, has a devastating effect on women's health. You've come a long way, baby. Well, by 85, you have come a long way in that lung cancer, at least among white females, is the number one killer. Uh, and it will probably become the number one killer among black females. The tobacco industry has courted ethnic minority groups by becoming sponsors of civic organizations, music festivals, street fairs, anywhere they can get their foot in the door. It's very clear to us that the black community in particular has been targeted to uh, promote uh, tobacco, cigarettes, and I doubt that you can find any business in this community that does not sell cigarettes. They will sell individual cigarettes for a dime, a, a nickel, to people who cannot buy a whole pack. They sell cigarettes to children in our communities. We have some liberation colors, red, black, and green, that we use in our movement, we've used for years. I noticed very interestingly that Salem Cigarette uses red, green, and black, which if a, pe if a person doesn't really think about it, they will be subliminally sucked into that as being liberation colors. So hey, we buying freedom cigarettes, liberation cigarettes, you know. And so these are just ways that they grab you. And we brought all these uh, traditions with us from Mexico. We didn't need cigarette companies to sponsor them. I mean, they discovered that we could spend that money on their products. And all of a sudden, they decided they like uh, Latino music. And here they are as great big uh, philanthropists coming to sponsor us to tell us what great culture we have, and they're going to help us promote it. Well, it doesn't need promotion. It, it survives by itself. But they need to advertise their products, and that's all they care about. They don't care about our culture. They never have, and they never will. It still tastes good like a cigarette should.